spotlight is shining on you. It's so bright. Uh, you put your hand up to, to block its glare. Uh, uh, the hand is blocking the light from your eyes, which are within the shadow of your hand. That's what planets and moons do during an eclipse. The bright light from the sun is blocked, resulting in a shadow. Now, there are two types of eclipses, solar and lunar. During a solar eclipse, the moon blocks sunlight from reaching Earth. During a lunar eclipse, Earth blocks sunlight from reaching the moon. Still can't keep it straight? Uh, how about this? During a solar eclipse, the sun disappears. During a lunar eclipse, the moon disappears. Eh? Let's look at these both. First up, the solar eclipse. The sun is large, but it's also very far away. So the sun appears to be about only as large as our moon. Interestingly, the moon can appear large enough to completely cover the sun. When this happens, we have what is called a total solar eclipse. It's an awesome sight to behold. What appears in the daytime sky is a black orb surrounded by the sun's pink chromosphere and pearly threads of the corona. Total solar eclipses happen on a yearly basis, but only over a relatively tiny portion of Earth's surface. In other words, you have to be at the right place at the right time to see a total solar eclipse. If you've seen a total solar eclipse, you're among the privileged few. If you're close, but not exactly within the narrow path of totality, you may experience a partial solar eclipse. In that case, you'll see the sun turn into a crescent shape as the moon passes in front of it. The sun is still amazingly bright during a partial, so the only way to see a partial eclipse is through a special solar filter or by casting the image of the sun through a pinhole. Pinholes made by overlapping leaves of a tree provide crescent images of the sun on the ground, as shown here. Or you can cast the image of the sun onto some white paper using binoculars or a telescope. But don't ever look through the binoculars or telescope directly at the sun, hmm? without proper and powerful solar filters. It's only with a total solar eclipse that you can see the sun's chromosphere and corona. And I mean total. If the sun is 99.9999% covered, not 100%, then the brightness of the photosphere is still sufficient to irreparably damage your eyes. But if the solar eclipse is total, that means the moon has completely shut out the photosphere. In that case, your risk of eye damage is much less. For my first total solar eclipse, I saw the face of the moon where the sun should be. But it was a new moon. How could I see the face of the new moon? Well, if it's a new moon, then on the moon it's necessarily a full earth. The brightness of the full earth lights up the lunar surface. It's earth shine, enough to make the dark side of the moon visible. Hey. But you needn't wait for a total eclipse. Look carefully at a crescent moon in the night sky, and you'll see that the dark side of the moon is faintly visible. That faint visibility is because of the earth shine. You should know there's a total solar eclipse crossing the continental United States on August 21st, 2017. It will be all the news when that happens, so you'll know about it. But consider traveling if you need to get to the path of totality. It only lasts a few minutes, but it's a sight to behold and remember for a lifetime. And remember to protect your eyes as necessary. Sometimes the moon is a little farther away such that it appears smaller and does not completely obscure the sun, even with perfect alignment. This is called an annular eclipse. An annular eclipse at sunset or sunrise can show the sun's an arch. The pinhole images of an annular eclipse, as shown here, shows up as a bunch of circles. Like a partial eclipse, however, annular eclipses should never be looked at directly. You may not have seen a total solar eclipse, 
but there's a good chance you've seen a total lunar eclipse. This is where the moon passes into the shadow of the Earth. Everybody on the moon-facing side of planet Earth gets to see this, provided it's not cloudy and provided you happen to be outside and you happen to look up. The Earth's shadow is about three times bigger than the moon, so the lunar eclipse can last for a couple of hours. At totality, sunlight bends through the circumference of Earth's atmosphere to give the moon a dark red hue. It's like the red from a million sunsets hitting the moon all at once. I still await a photograph of Earth from the moon during a lunar eclipse. Uh, of course, from the moon, you'd call that a solar eclipse. Huh? Here's an artist's depiction from the early 1900s. Eclipses don't happen very often for a couple of reasons. First, the moon revolves around us at an angle. This means there are only two times during a month that it passes through the ecliptic, which is the plane of Earth's orbit and where it needs to be for an eclipse to happen. Second, where it passes through the ecliptic doesn't always fall on a line drawn between the Sun and Earth, so the three-body linear alignment is somewhat rare. It's regular and easily predicted by astronomers, but not as frequent as we might like. Let me leave you with a challenge. The moon is always a new moon during a solar eclipse and always a full moon during a lunar eclipse. Can you explain why? Out loud? I bet you can. Try it. And good science to you.